Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Fixture Form video with Silent Mike. That's me, Mike Farr. If you want to get involved, we need three reps, 70% landscape, high definition, sent to askmikke at gmail.com. Give this thing a thumbs up. Let's fix your form. Let's get better today, team. We got some conventional pulls. My man's got the towel between his legs. He's pulling the Tom Brady. He's running the show, or he's protecting the winger. If you're protecting the winger, props to you. I'm not mad at you. Uh, overall form looks really good, man. It looks like you're curling your hips underneath you a little bit too much and pushing those knees a little bit too far forward. Again, uh, you know, hips close to the bar is a cue often used with sumo and sometimes with conventional. Um, but for the majority of people, I think it ends up having this forward curl in the low back, and that's not what we want. We need that back flat. And we also want you, so for you, your hips a little bit higher. And then also we want your body weight a little bit more behind you. Um, shins or knees going forward on the conventional deadlift is okay. And it'll allow you to get a little bit of quad out of the ground. But it's uh, end of diminishing returns where at some point uh, we will get a bad bar path. And our knees will get in the way of the barbell. So we want to avoid that. I love seeing a bunch of people deadlift in that gym though. You're in a regular gym but you got like two or three people deadlifting. Shout out to you all. So hips a little bit higher my man. Uncurl that low back and then hips back. Uh-oh, we got another real clean pull here. If I had to be a nitpicky man, overall your form is really, really solid. If I had to be nitpicky, I would watch that neck a little bit, keep it a little bit more neutral, and keep it still. Um, neutral isn't even uh, as important to me in this case rather than you uh, wrenching on it. Number two, around your legs, around those big old quads of yours, uh, I'd watch out. The bar floats away from you a little bit, so make sure you're pulling that bar into you tight around the quads and around the knee. Keeping contact with the bar the entire time will allow proper bar path and also allow you to lift mo weight. And that's why we're here. We're trying to get mo better, mo weight. Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty good, bro. Uh, really, really, really solid pulls. Um, I'm not a huge fan of dropping the weight like that. One, it looked like your grip was slipping. If you do plan to compete, you're going to have to show a little bit more control on the way down. And I'd also have you hold that lockout a little bit. More conventional pulls. Everybody's trying to build the peach. Everybody's trying to build the back. Uh, overall, everyone's form is really solid. Right here, it looks like your grip's a little uneven, my man. Uh, it looks like that left hand is closer to the knurling, or excuse me, closer to the smooth than the right one is. So take your time and get your routine. Every single time you sit up, make sure everything's perfect and everything's the same. Um, number two... It's hard to tell from this angle. Maybe we can get a side, but it looks like your low back is a little bit curled, similar to that first guy. Remember, we want our hips a little bit higher than you think, probably. We want tension in those hamstrings, and we want our shoulders adjust over the barbell, um, over, our, over our wrist. Yeah, kind of like I thought. So low back is a little bit too curled. We need to flatten that thing out. And also, your uh, bar path gets way wonky. It has to go around your knees. You're never going to be able to lift the most amount of weight possible that way. You're pushing the barbell too forward on your start by jamming your knees forward. So pull that bar into your shins, flatter back, hips a little bit higher, and weight behind the bar. That'll allow a more efficient pull with a straighter bar path and not having you kick that bar forward. Uh, any motion forward under you know 85, 90, 95% load um, will take away from your top end. You can see it get away from you a lot right there. And then uh, you're spending the whole uh, lift recovering and your energy recovering where you know 70% should be a piece of cake if uh, the bar path is efficient. And then 100% uh, obviously will get stronger with some training volume, etc. Uh, but even right there, you can see on the setup, you're just too curled. We want those shins a little bit straighter in your case and back way flatter. Uh, we can't get that forward motion of the barbell because then you're just playing catch up the rest of the lift. And I said catch up, and I don't mean French fries, you fatties. All right, we're talking about deadlifts. We're not talking about McDonald's Happy Meals. What do we got next? Oh, that's weird. More conventional tugging. Just a bunch of guys tugging together here on a Tuesday on the internet. What else is new? Welcome to 2018. More conventional pulls. Boys like to tug. It's what we do. Pretty clean pull. Let's see. Not bad, not bad. Form overall is really, really good, man. It looks like that neck, again, is a little bit wrenched. There might be a mirror in front of you. Again, for any kind of lifting, squat bench dead, especially for the squat or the deadlift, I suggest not facing a mirror and not looking at yourself in the mirror. Body awareness is very important. We want to understand what the feeling and the sensation is of controlling our body and how to get tight and what a proper lift would look like. You can film yourself or have a friend look at you, and they can help you out 
with feedback or you can critique yourself afterwards. But during the lift, you want to be able to feel it out. Um, overall, my man looks really good. I think we could also get that back a little bit flatter uh, and body weight maybe just a hair in front of the bar. I, I wish we had a forward view. Uh, narrowing your stance just a bit might help. And then make sure that grip is just on the outside of your legs. Uh, we want to reduce range of motion and also get as tight as we can. If we have our arms just outside our legs, we'll get a little bit more compact. And I can't really tell from this angle um, how wide that stance is. Uh, but typically, um, you know, just inside, hip width or just inside is going to be best for most. I think uh, over time, people will find a narrower stance will be a little bit more comfortable if you can control um, one starting position and two, your balance. Uh, but overall, really good, man. Try not to rinse that neck. Try not to face the mirror. Keep that back a little bit flatter if you can. Really flex those lats, flex that tummy, uh, but overall really, really solid. If you've seen some of my other videos, I am a big fan of kind of controlling the eccentric on the way down, um, which you do a little bit of there, but even the last couple inches you drop and just kind of forget about it. Forget about it! Uh, I'd rather see a little bit more control in the Ed Cohn style deadlift. Check my channel, we've gone over that many times. More conventional pulls, what do we got, bro? Come on, man, that's not 70%, man. Come on, man. I don't ask a lot of you guys. I don't ask a fucking lot of you guys, but I asked for 70%. Looks like you're just rushing a little bit, my man. It looked on that first set. One, I don't know if it was too heavy or if it was uh, the same weight, but it looks like you're rushing this whole deal. Let's not rush. Bitch, I'm rushing, but bitch, why are you rushing? I believe Nelly said that. Um, one, I would suggest flatter shoes. It looks like you're a little bit wobbly there. And then two, you're just rushing your setup and rushing your pull. Uh, hips are a little bit low there. We want to get tension and slack out of the system. Uh, we also want to be able to lock out our knees and hips simultaneous when we're doing a conventional pull. Uh, that'll allow for a proper bar path. If you lock your knees out too early under a heavier load, your body will fall forward. Momentum will go forward. And you won't be able to lock it out. Um, I can't really fix or help anything under a one rep max. Sometimes it is a technical thing. Sometimes, uh, majority of time, uh, I believe it's just you're too weak to do that lift. And that's very, very common. Uh, people say, oh, I, I missed it three inches off my knees. Oh, I missed it at my knees or at lockout. And how do I fix this? And how do I fix the speed there? You can work on some points. Um, but often I think if you're technically proficient um, and you're building volume over time, best answer is you're just going to get stronger. If, uh, if, if we know what your true 100% is, which we never really do, but let's say we do, 101% is always going to miss somewhere. So even if you could perhaps find a weak point and fix it, you're going to have another weak point. Once the weight is too heavy, you're going to miss it somewhere. That's just how lifting goes. That's just logical. Um, so not saying that we shouldn't focus on any weak points, um, but should should say that we shouldn't worry on those misses. We should just build volume and our technique over time. Um, my man's right here looks really, really solid, actually. Uh, you're also locking out those knees maybe a hair early. Uh, try to keep that tension in the hamstrings a little longer. That rep was a little bit better. Uh, back's in a pretty good position. Looks like lats are tight. We can get our lats. We can always constantly uh, physically and mentally remind my, ourselves to get our stomach and lats a little bit tighter. Um, the tighter we can get over time, the more we flex, the lighter the weights are feel, the more we can lift. That's it for this one. I appreciate you guys. New videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Give this thing a thumbs up. Catch me on Instagram, Mike 2 ks I appreciate y'all. See you later.